Yeah, this is Jokia Setro, welcoming you to Setro Craft Channel. To my subscribers, you've been doing so great. And you know, I'm not going to forget my online students. They are doing wonderfully well. Yeah, if there's any language like that. So today, we want to be achieving something very easy. For those of you that have watched the basic bodies, uh, uh, it's not really basic bodies, that have watched the tube top, the strapless tube top. This is just what I came out with. The strapless tube top, not the one, not the one of the pattern, the freehand cutting. If you watch the video, you see that this was what I used, and I just came out with this. So I just decided, let me just make it a dress. I just added a little peplum, and I just made it a dress. So it's as easy as that. So today, we want to be considering something very easy as A and B and C. Today, we want to be considering what's it called? Basic bodies pattern for dress basic bodice pattern for dress so it's as easy as a and b and c i know you can tell me that acetro's acetro fashion school that's our slogan so just assume this your fabric this is your fabric you see this way it's this way you fold the fabric into two what i will achieve first is the front panel front panel So what actually determines the extent of your fold is the largest circumference in your measurements. Let me just read out the measurement parameters for this basic bodice pattern for a dress that we're making. Just a, a, a simple dress, you're going to see how it's going to come out. So the bust, I have bust 40, please, sorry, some person says I'm always too fast. That's how I said, so let, I'm just kidding, let me just count that now. But we have bust bust 40 then half length it's 17 the waist is 34 the hips line the hips line when you want to make a dress you've got to get your hips line if you're making a dress like this i'm wearing this is a dress that has a joining from from the half length position as you can see your hips line will be gotten from your waist point from the joining point so you you get the tip through this way and get the biggest part of your hips so that's your hips line so it's from that position that you take your hips measurement that's what hips line is for but if you're doing a, a straight dress like this pattern i'm doing i'm not doing a dress that has joining from half length position i'm doing just a basic body pattern for a straight dress just a dress a simple dress so you have to take your tape measure from his points from the highest point of your shoulder this way the other point of the shoulder then you go down you take it down to your hips location the biggest part of your hips as you can see the biggest part of your hips so you get what's the measure there from this my tape i'm seeing something 26 and a half so i'm seeing something this way like 26 and a half for most persons it's 25 it all depends on your body structure so basic body structure so you just discover your own hips line it's from that hips line you're going to take your hips measurements then the bust normally you know how to take the bust measurements don't make it too tight said about that then the dress length it all depends on the dress you want to take the dress you want to achieve how long you want it to achieve how long you want it to be please so this dress length i'm going to use 40 inches the hips i'm going to use 42 inches then the shoulder or their cross back the shoulder or their cross back this way yeah i'll be using 15 inches then the round hand hole round hand hole is very important in dresses or tops whatever you're making you see some person their hand feet will be so tight they will not have any degree of freedom it's because they, don't, they do not take their round hand hole measurements. So if you want to know more about that, you can check my video on sleeves, how to make sleeves and all that. You see that there. So your round hand hole, you get it this way. You see? You make sure it's a bit free to allow the ease of movement and to allow the person from having peppery sensation. To prevent uh, a peppery sensation. So just take it this way. Tell the person to raise the hand if she's free. 
So that's the round hand hole. So the round hand hole we're using is 18. So let's get started. It's just as easy as A and B and C. So you just discover your origin. I told you what will determine the extent of your fold is the largest circumference. The extent of this fold, the largest circumference in our measurement is 42. And 42 inches, when you want to start cutting your dresses, maybe you're using pattern, you want to cut out your pattern and then cut on your fabric, you have to get the extent of your fold through your biggest measurement, that's 42. So you divide by four. Why are you dividing by four? This is the front panel, is into two fold. The back panel is also into two fold. Two plus two will give you four, so you divide by four. So 42 divided by four is gonna give us 10 and a half. This 10 and a half inches. Then I'm gonna be adding like two inches large. So, as you can see, the extent of my fold is much. So I'll try to reduce it. Just to save your fabric. To make sure that you're not wasting your fabric. Okay, right now, I'll determine my origin. So, remember starting from here. So this is my origin. So from this origin, what do you do? It's as easy as A and B and C. Just take your shoulder measurements, shoulder measurements, or some persons call it A, B, that's across back or back. So I told you we'll be using 15. For shoulder or back or A, B, you always divide by two. Just get it that way. You divide by two whatever measurement you have. So if you have 20 inches for the shoulder, that means you divide by two. If you have, uh, what's it called? 15 inches as you're having, I would divide by two, and that'll give us seven and a half. So I'll add half inch for sewing allowance. That'll give me eight. So I'll just take my tape measure this way. So this is my shoulder. Then from that shoulder, I'll determine my round ham hole. My round ham hole is 18. 18, I'll divide by two. If you don't know how to really get the ham hole, you can just watch my video on that. I have a video to that effect. So from this point, you just take it this way. 18 divided by two will give you nine. So you just come this way, achieve your nine. Get out your hand hold this way. After get arriving at your hand hold this way, then you go to your half length position. Your half length. We have the burst. You can just take your burst. This is my burst line here. Ten inches. That's your shoulder to make a point, 10 inches. So this is the burst line, this is the burst line. Then I'll go to my half length. So the half length is 17 inches. Remember this, you could have half inch if you're sewing directly on your fabric with that half inch for sewing allowance. Then I'll come down this way 17 inches if you're sewing on your fabric you can also add half inch for sewing a lance it's a teaser it's a and b and c so this the waistline or the half length so the burst is 40 40 divided by 4 will give us 10 10 inches you achieve it this way now it depends on the type the the extent of allowance you do have in your fabric some persons they don't like to add allowance if you don't like to add allowance so you just put like quarter inch here and you cut out but if you had to if you need to add allowance maybe you, you could go 
bigger later or anything you could need any adjustments i always prefer adding two inches allowance so i'll sew on maybe like half inch then the remaining will be for any other thing i want to do so then i come to the waistline the waist is 34 you divide by four so that will give you eight and a half inches then you do what you add your two inches allowance as usual after this you get your dress length before the dress length I told you don't forget you're taking your hips you get your hips line and I told you the hips line I'll be using is 25 inches. It all depends. Yours could be 27, 26, just like you saw mine. But for this, I'm using 25 inches. So yours could be 27, 26 and a half. Just determine your hips line as I've shown earlier on. This is the hips line. So from this hips line, From this hips line, you take the hips measurements. The hips is 42. 42 divided by 4 will give us 10 and a half. This 10, this is half of 10. So we have 10 and a half this way. Then you have your normal 2 inches allowance. After that, we now go to the dress length. The dress length, remember we said we're achieving... 40 inches for the dress length So this 40 inches here so you could have add you could add half inch for turning in when you're cutting on your fabric or whatever you want to turn in fold in when you're cutting directly on your fabric So this dress, I just want to make it, let's just try to connect our points. Could use a ruler this way. Okay, this the bust line. You're connecting it to the waist line. Then from the waist line, you're connecting it to the hips line. After the hips line, now the dress length. Remember, if it's a pencil dress, I'm not even doing for a pencil dress. If it's a pencil dress, it's going to come inside. It all depends on the degree of penciness you want to achieve. If it's a pencil dress, it's going to come inside. But for this, I just want to achieve a simple, free pattern. So it's going to come out a bit this way. So it's just going to come out a bit this way. So I just take it here. Just I'm coming down this way. Just a little ease at the end line. See this play, so you can see the dress I've achieved. Just a simple dress, and you could add color pin. Remember, you sh this should not be sharp edge, so you just curve it this way. So then, now taking our dart, you come to this half length, this hips line. This is the waist, this is the burst. As you can see, that's the burst line. This is the waist line. So taking your darts, you just come to this waist line. You take four inches this way. And so after arriving at it this way, achieving my neckline, I just want to achieve a simple round neck. simple round neck so I'll count this way just want to make it three and a half inches by three and a half inches remember if you don't know how to achieve this I have a video to dissect so three and a half by three and a half
So I'm keeping my neckline. Then you drop your shoulder. I want to drop my shoulder by one and a half inch. Why are we dropping our shoulder? The shoulder of humans are not really straight. It's slanted this way. So that's why you, because of the slope, you drop it. You could drop by one inch. You could drop by one and a half inch. So. So having achieved it this way now. Now I want to take my back. Can you see that it's as easy as A and B and C? Just in 10 minutes, you could just cut out your simple dress and you're good to go and you're okay. So what is remaining now is just cutting, taking our dart. So from this waistline, I just want to take one inch dart. You could take one inch dart or half inch dart. It all depends on you. So taking one inch dart, what are you just going to do? You just take your tape measure of this way. You come to four inches. Get the four inch this way on the waistline. So you roll it up to like five and a half inches above the waistline. Then like three inches below the waistline because it's a dress. It's a straight dress. So. have it straight this way so i want to achieve one inch that you could achieve half inch that if you want to achieve half inch that that means you take quarter on both sides but if you want to achieve one inch that you take half inch on both sides so that's it this way this so this half and this also half so with this you're going to have one inch that as you can see so just take the dart that way this way So, then I want to teach you another easy one. If you have your dress this way and you have this normal dart, there's also what we call, you have this, your normal dart this way. There's also what we call the French dart. The French dart is always on the arm hole. The French dart is always three inches or thereabouts away from the arm hole position so that it will just give you a, a form of such a, uh, a nice pointed shape this way so it's going to be pointing to the normal that then you have the french that so it's going to give you the nice shape i want to show you something like that that me so you can see this dress with me this is the normal that here as you can see it's from the waistline here then you see the french that such that by the time you wear it the bust shape is going to come out it's going to give you something nice i see it's pointed oh it's going to give it a nice bust shape. So taking your French dart, it's just very easy. So you just come from this arm hole, your arm hole position, you come from your arm hole position, you come three inches or thereabouts downward this way. So you'll be taking the dart, could come two and a half inches downward. So, two and a half inches, you want to take the dart. The dart will be like four inches forward this way. So, it depends on how you want it. You could make it one inch dart, half inch dart, or whatever inch you want it. So, between half inch, one inch, one and a half, or two inches. So, you take it this way. For me to achieve four to the front. So, remember, I'm going to make it, I want to achieve four inches dart. French that that means I'm going to make it six because I've added two inches allowance here. So just note that when you're cutting your fabric. So what do I do? It's just as easy as A and B and C. French that you'll be thinking something so big. So half inch on both sides to give me one inch that. So this half inch. Such that 
I have one inch on both sides. So I'll just take it forward. This, I've achieved my French dart. So this is what I was trying to explain to you. By the time this dart comes out this way, then you have the French dart pointing this way. So the bust shape is really going to come out and it's going to give your, your dress a nice shape. You just try it out. So this is just the basic body pattern, front panel for a dress. So let's cut out right now. this as you can see just achieved your basic bodice pattern for a simple dress then another thing i want to teach you maybe you've seen something all oh, this color p on dress okay maybe you've seen some dresses that have a, a form of color p uh on the hemline it's so you say okay how do you achieve this it's very easy let me just try to do this type of color p It just come it's to be over shape as you can see just do it this way it's all the things It's just how to achieve your scallop, then you cut out. But one thing you have to take note of is that before you achieve a scallop like this, you have to take this scallop into cognizance with your dress measure. Remember, when I cut out this scallop right now, my dress will be less with uh, I'll have lesser measure with the length of this scallop. So, when you want to achieve a scallop like this, maybe you want to make it two inches, you just add that inch of scallop you want to achieve to your dress length. Do you understand? So that you don't have a short dress or something. So, if you want to achieve it, it's just pretty easy. You just cut out those way. If you want it to be like a circular word, whatever you want to achieve in fashion. Remember, I tell you this is easy. It's A and B and C. <laughs> See a special kind of dress, uh, it's if it's a skirt, so your dress is just going to have this. But remember, if you don't have this, if you don't want this color, you just leave it the way it is that way. So, some persons will leave it this way, it's a, it's a special form of style. You can make it have this color in the front and also at the back, you could make it only front or 
without the back. So it's going from a nice style or anyhow you want it. So right now let's cut out the back panel and we're true with the basic bodice pattern for a dress. After achieving your basic bodice pattern, front pattern, getting the back it's the easiest, so easy. So I, I don't do much uh, trouble of remeasuring and all that. You don't need it if you're really good at what you're doing. So you just do what? You place your fabric this way just into two folds. What will determine the extent of your fold is also the biggest circumference. And remember, we had some ease here. So you just place this, your front panel, on the back fold to achieve the back panel. But the difference is just that you're going to need zip allowance. Zip allowance. So, okay. So you're going to create your zip allowance. Remember the back will be having zip. So, if you put a zip at the back, you just create the allowance for it. One inch zip allowance this way. So, get it across board, then roll out. So, having achieved your zip allowance this way, you zip. You know, you're going to affix your zip from the back point to like 20 inches or thereabouts. It all depends on how long your zip will be. But you make sure you have the hints that will allow you, that will allow you enter your that will allow your hips to enter into the dress just cut out the back this way remember i told you you can achieve a special type of style you have this color pin in the front then you could decide not to have it at the back so it's just it's all depending on you and you could decide to have it both ways so it's fashion it's how you like it This method you don't need to stress yourself cutting the back aside cutting the front aside just an easy way out So the little difference with the having is that the back, for the back panel, most times the back neckline is always higher than the front neckline. But in case you want same neckline for both back and front, you could just cut it this way. But in case you don't want same neckline, you want the back to be a bit high. So you just still make it this three and a half inches. Get this your origin, you know, this is the zipper lines. So you just to make it the across back location three and a half inches like the back like the front i mean so you just make it 
like the front make it the three and a half inches by two inches Just achieve the neckline this way for the back. So you can see it's as easy as A and B and C cutting out your basic bodice pattern. Then you discover your waist points. When I cut out, you see that. Okay, I've just cut out the back panel this way. I'm not putting any scallop here at the back, so it all depends on you. You could. So, this you just have your back panel held this way. Remember, if it's directly on your fabric, you just cut into two this way. You open up for your zipper. Let me just do that. But before you do that, you know, you also need to put your dart allowance. You put your dart. So, achieving your darts is just like the front, but the darts, you, you're not going to achieve French darts. You're not going to achieve French darts for the back, back panel. You don't put French darts at the back, so you just put it only on the front to help the bust shape, since there is no bust at the back. So, you just discover your at length, as usual resort. 17 but remember if you're cutting directly on your fabric you add half inch for showing so that so 17 inches so from this my half length this is what will determine my that okay that so i just come this way four inches remember this zip allowance i'm not going to come to that in so four inch I'll just take my ruler this way, five inch. I used five and a half inches for word. And I'm using three inches after the half length position. So I'll just take my one inch dot. Half inch on both sides. So that you have one inch that please remember that's are not to be sharp edge. So you could just use a cut to cut 
of this position also for the front panel you just have like a curve curve so the back panel is ready just as easy as A and B and C panel you can see with this you have a special form of style yeah you have this color P at the front then you have just the normal back just a simple dress and if you want to achieve the sleeve I also have a video to that effect how you can achieve your suit sleeve if it's a puff sleeve it's a jacket sleeve so if this video has actually been educated to you don't forget to do what Press the like button, then you're good to go. So till I see you next time.